Hey, everybody, this is Harvey Sluggo Wasserman back with you for the 189th count of 189 Green Grassroots Emergency Election Protection Coalition Zoom calls. We are in the midst, of course, of a incredibly uh, tight and exciting um, a nail-biter election. We are going to be continuing right to the very end with our till November, what is it this year, 8th, 7th, 6th? I think it's the 6th uh, election with is uh, focusing on issues of election protection and get out the vote and uh, protecting our democracy. And at the same time, we will be talking about renewable energy and saving the planet, especially solar, with a new focus on solarizing the upcoming 2028 Olymp- Olympics in Los Angeles, where it is today a mere 110 degrees in the shade, if there is any shade. Uh, Dr. Nancy, you can report directly from us on that. How hot is it uh, in Los Angeles today? Are you about to keel over? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. Nancy is in La- in Santa Monica. At least you're near the ocean, which is usually a little cold, cooler than the rest of the city. Right. And until this week, it didn't get above 83. And now it's well into the 90s. And I'm just sensitive to it. I can't handle it. I just wrote a big deal for our neighborhood vlog about 12 ways to stay cool and i'm not going outside oh well you're not far from the ocean but i understand the sharks are much hungrier when the water is warm so (laughs) be very careful but uh today we're going to be um we're going to have alan minsky i believe from progressive democrats of america we're going to be joined by kenny bruno my former uh uh, green well my buddy uh formerly well, we're still with Greenpeace, actually. We're both voting members. I've been with Greenpeace since 1991. Um, also going to be joined by State Senator um, uh, uh, Mike Hirsch. Can you pronounce the state senator's name for us? Yes, it's uh, I'm Senator Wald Stryker. Uh, Jeffrey Wald Stryker. And um, Ray, Ma- Ray McClellan is going to give us the down and dirty report from Atlanta, from Georgia, where the shenanigans with election protection are incredibly complicated and uh, really, really critical. So um, uh, Ray is going to give us a report. We may hear from Lori Grace in Hawaii. And then the second hour, starting at 6 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to hear from Andrea Miller, the great Andrea Miller, who is doing tremendous work on uh, Get Out the Vote uh, with postcards. If you are interested in doing Get Out the Vote postcards, Andrea Miller is the place to go for the Center for Common Ground. You can look it up now, but as I say, it's 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific. Uh, Andrea Miller will, will be with us. We're joined now by Alan Minsky, um, uh, the only uh, St. Louis Cardinal fan I've ever met, uh, who is the uh, lead, leading light at the Progressive Democrats of America. Alan, you are going to give us are you driving? You're not allowed to drive on this. The last time we thing we wanted, you can sit in the car, but you can't be moving. So um, uh, tell us, Alan, you wanted to give us a quick report. Uh, you are muted. Let's get you unmuted. Hold on, bro. Um, uh, Alan and I are still waiting to get our sports show at KPFK, where I will reveal the uh, greatest all t- of all time in football, baseball, and um, and basketball. But in the meantime, Alan, did we get you unmuted? Let's see. Yeah, oh, you're good. If we, okay. What is it? That you're gonna you're gonna reveal the greatest what? The greatest of all time, uh, with indisputable. I'm going to give the indisputable case for the greatest all, of all time for football, the NFL, baseball, and uh, and the NBA. So that awaits our our show. But in the meantime, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna give us a, a full report on your on PDA, <laughs> Progressive Democrats of America and your um, uh, getting out the vote efforts. Well, actually, I would, I'd love it to be a little bit of a dialogue, too. Maybe you and I, Harvey, can back and forth a bit, because I do want to know what the sentiment on this call is around the kind of work that Greg Pallas has been doing, uh, particularly around the film Vigilantes. And what I really am interested in knowing from this group pertaining to the release, and I'd love to be able to come on just again for five or ten minutes, not long, next week, because by next week, the 2024 voterscalendar.org will be live. That is the project that Mimi Kennedy inspired with uh, Steve, I believe his name is Rosenfeld. Maybe yes. he's even uh, 
from 2020. Well, we reproduced it for 2024. And this time, however, we really want to use it as an instrument through PDA, but also through GREEP. When it is live, maybe next week if I can come back on because it will be live. Yes, we're, and we're next, all the way next to... week, um, Alan, next week, we will have Greg Pallast talking about his film, Vigilante. Great. Well, Greg, I saw Greg's film last night with Tom Hartman and a bunch of people. Sorry, I got better shade. I am now parked again, Harvey. And um, good. Um, by the way, it's 100 degrees here, folks. So I know environmental is one of the E's in this group. And um, we all have to be honest about the fact that we ain't doing anything to address anthropogenic climate change that's adequate for what needs to be done. And, uh, and Harvey with Solartopia and that vision is something that we have to all be championing. But anyway, PDA, as people probably know, we had our probably most successful event uh, during my tenure as executive director, which was the um, convention we had in, in Chicago called Progressive Central. We are going to be re-releasing all of the videos from it, in particular, um, after the election. Um, we are going to be releasing them because we're doing the editing now beforehand. And um, But the point being with that stuff is that if it is a Harris administration, we are going to be reminding them that the progressive agenda is what the American public wants. Here is the articulation of that agenda from 60 participants at a conference, including 14 members of the Progressive Caucus, two U.S. senators, Bernie Sanders right. giving the keynote speech. And so we're going to be doing that. That's the update on PDA. But we will be highlighting it then because we do feel that Donald Trump has to be defeated. And okay. um, we are, can you hear me, Harvey? Yeah. Yes, I will say we, we are nonpartisan officially on these calls, but I will okay. tell you that if uh, Donald Trump wins the election, uh, we will be broadcasting from Costa Rica or any other <laughs> <laughs> country that has non extradition oh, treaties. Oh, yeah. so. well, yeah, and, 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 and then voters calendar, by the way, is completely nonpartisan. It is okay. nothing but real information. And that's really what I wanted to come on the call about. People can go to the website 2024 with the numbers 2024 voters with an S calendar.org. And they will find a prototype of what it is. It's basically a United States map broken up into 50 states plus the District of Columbia. You click on any of them and then you'll see all the information. Now, the only link that's live on the front page right now is Alabama because we are not going to be uploading any of the information for 2024 until we do it on mass because this kind of website needs to be bulletproof. You cannot be putting up false information. So we are all the way through um, to Pennsylvania in the states that we have completed. Thank you. If you click on Alabama, you'll see the 2020 page. Uh, it's the only one that goes through. And this is what the kind of information we'll have. However, this time around, in states where there is clear targeting and scrubbing of voter rolls, we want to have more on this website this time than last time. We still want nothing but accurate information, but we want to be able to make clear, and I know that Palast has a site that does this, and I hopefully will be working in tandem with Center for Common Ground, and we'll be working in tandem with all of the progressive organizations that PDA is now coordinated with, which is pretty much all of them, um, to get the information out, get to people, particularly in communities that are targeted, to have them their names be scrubbed from the voting rolls. And there's okay, two want, uh, yeah, go ahead, I want to welcome, By the way, uh, Alan, let me just interrupt very briefly. I want to welcome Kenny Bruno, who's our next produ presenter, uh, onto the call with us. And um, uh, Kenny, meet Alan Minsky. You guys should know each other. And um, uh, uh, Alan, we're going to coordinate your website with ours uh, the, the, we have two of course the U.S. grassroots and then we also have the uh, green uh, the, the uh, grassroots EP dot org so your mapping will be part of it and Kenny Bruno uh, you're in New York but you uh, you should be in touch with Alan Minsky and I'll put you there and also we're joined by Ray McClendon who's going to follow Kenny uh, go ahead Alan well, and you will be yeah, back and Alan and you'll come back with us You'll come back with us next week. With Great. The... And I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute myself after this and listen in for quite a while. Um, I'll probably be gone by the time Erica gets on. Uh, sorry, Andrea gets on. Um, but um, I will say this, though. We have to be earnest, all of us. We can identify what is being done to try to deny people the franchise. We have to be very, very clear-headed in our thinking over the next six weeks about how we negate this reactionary effort to steal the 
right of people to vote in this country and and what it will take to raise consciousness enough that people bring to the polls the information by going in advance and finding their voter registration status, finding what their signature looked like previously so they can match their signatures now, and of course, tragically bring the necessary information they need to the polls in order to be allowed to vote in the states that now demand such. And so this is going to be huge. And, you know, let me just leave with this. This is nonpartisan. Probably a lot of people on the call fashion themselves via the so-called political left. And there's no more political left position than having real, full, absolute, universal enfranchisement. Because after all, the term comes from the French Revolution, and it didn't refer to the economic distribution of economic power. It referred, there was a subtext of that, but it referred to who got to have a say in who run, ran the society. This is the most core and radical position we can have to defend everybody's right to have a say in the running of our society. And it, this group is full of heroes. It really is full of heroes. Well, and I think this group is probably a more concentrated group that understands that as well as anybody in the country. We're honored to work with you. And I'll be back next week in that website. By that time, we'll have all 51 pages up. And we will probably great. ask if people can troubleshoot them, even though they've already been troubleshot. We want to keep doing it because obviously everybody here will know the details for their state and they should take their state, look at it, make sure it's all right and good to go. And we just look forward to working closely with everybody over the next two months because um, it's go time on this issue now and uh, right. our democracy is in the balance. So Couldn't be yeah. better said, Alan Minsky, is, uh, executive director of Progressive Democrats of America, former uh, program director at uh, KPFK, uh, got got our, our radio show going. And I, I want to introduce you now. Alan, you can stick with us. I've got a couple hands, but if you don't mind waiting, Carla and Ruth, I want to go straight to Kenny Bruno. His uh, pr uh, presentation and the article he just authored in um, uh, Truth Out, and uh, Steve, I sent you the link. If you want to put it in the chat, that would be great. Uh, is right, very germane, uh, right on target to this. And plus, I got to give him the highest uh, possible recommendation, which is that he's been with Greenpeace uh, for many, many years. Uh, Kenny, uh, come on down. Uh, let's get you're unmuted. We have 50. Oh, my God. We have about 60 people on the call with us. Uh, Kenny, can you tell us about your article and your message? And then we'll go to Ray McClendon in Georgia. But uh, please, Kenny Bruno. Yes. And just um, sound check here. You hear me OK? Yeah, you're good. You're good. OK, great. Yeah. So um, I, you know, I'm not an election expert. Um, I observe these things pretty closely as a lay person. And so when I discovered a path that I think nobody else had written about for the election to be stolen, um, a potential path, uh, I thought, listen, I'm going to lay it out there because if I can think of it, they can think of it. Uh, I'm not saying it's the most likely scenario. I'm not saying that other scenarios shouldn't be prepared for, but um, it's just one scenario that just shows in some ways how vulnerable our system is a lot of us thought from third grade that we had all these checks and balances and um, and a sturdy democracy. But actually, it turns out that it's kind of a house of cards. But anyway, let me explain uh, specifically what I wrote about. And apologies if any of you go to the article for the hideous photo. That's the editor's choice, not mine. Um, as a lot of you will know, the editor chooses the title of the article and the photo. So. Um, don't hold me responsible for that. Um, and don't and don't keep it on the screen too long either. I don't think people need to see that anymore. Um, okay. Anyway, the original title of this article, my title, which the editors didn't choose, was Down Ballot or Bust. And the reason in a general way is that as of January 3rd at noon, the uh, the Republicans will hold two very important levers of power, which is the Supreme Court and the House of Representatives. And whether they hold those the House after noon on January 3rd is the question that um, my article explores. And here's, um, here's what I'm talking about. We have to win the election on November 5th. And everybody's talking about that, most of all. But as we know, these aren't normal elections anymore. This is elections where one side is willing to do anything, steal, cheat, lie, threaten violence, or even commit violence to to win. 
So after November 5th, there's going to be a series of milestones, as everybody now remembers from 2020. Um, a week or so later, the uh, the count will happen. We have to win the count. Then in December, there's uh, certifications at the state level, and we have to win those. And then there's the congressional certification on January 6th. Now, the House of Representatives has the key role here in certifying the election. If there's a majority of Democrats and they elect a Democratic speaker, which would presumably be Hakeem Jeffries, on January 3rd, then on January 6th, we could probably squeak out a certification. But, and it's likely that if Harris wins the elect, uh, Electoral College, that her coattails will bring a slim majority uh, in, in Congress. But what if, and I admit that these scenarios have a lot of what ifs in them, but I think, again, it behooves us to think about all the ways that this could go down. Um, what if prior to January 3rd, in red states, governors or secretaries of state aligned with MAGA declined to certify some House races because they were very close? Let's say the, they have an under 1% margin and the loser challenges it and the governor or secretary of state, depending on which state, um, that's the certifying entity, um, declines to, to to certify them. Then you get to January 3rd, and you might have, instead of a slim Democratic majority, you might have a slim Republican majority with a few vacant seats. Or you could even have a tie. You could have 217 uh, of each in the House and one vacant seat. And remember, if if Congress does not certify the election, it, that is to say, if no one is deemed having 270 electoral uh, votes, then it goes to a contingent election, meaning that each state gets one vote no matter how many seats it has. And the Republicans are very likely to have a majority of majority Republican seats, even if it's only 26, um, and, or, or even if it's 25 and some uh, one or two states are, are split. So you could have a contingent election where the president is selected by Congress if no one gets 270 electoral votes. So in the meantime, so one other point I want to make is that in the meantime, a lot of these questions will go to courts. And I think there's a complacency, even in our community a little bit, maybe not this community on, on this call right now. This might be the most, you know, sort of nervous and skeptical, rightly so, community about election uh, theft. But there's complacency in general about the courts because last time in 2020, all of these, uh, most almost all the decisions rejected the election deniers. But now we've seen a very emboldened Supreme Court that has become clearly partisan, uh, most, most clearly with the outrageous uh, immunity decision. Clearly, they're trying to, they, they are, they have a political agenda. And, and they've even said, or um, at least one has said, one side is going to win this. Um, and, you know, Sam Alito said one side is going to win this. And there's no doubt which side he's on. So we can't really, uh, you know, feel good about what would happen if any decision about how to count the votes and how to certify these um, the states or the congressional elections. We can't feel good if those end up at the Supreme Court. Uh, and so I think we, you know, and I'm not again, I'm not saying this is the most likely scenario, but we could see a lot of chaos between January 3rd and January 6th. Uh, and I just think that we need to be prepared for that. Um, we need to prepare the media for that. We need to prepare litigators for that and the public, too, because when all this kind of thing happens, it's better to be able to say, oh, here comes the BS that we expected rather than be shocked and, and not know what to do. Um, and I, I want to also say, and this is a point for discussion, Harvey, you know, we don't want to make it so um, so scary that people think, oh, there's nothing we can do to stop this this uh, from being uh, stolen. In fact, we want to motivate people more. We don't want to demotivate people by saying there's no way to stop this. But we do want to talk about it in a way that will energize people even more to to defend the democracy that we have. So that means 
winning by not only winning, but winning by enough to make it very hard to challenge and winning down ballot in Congress by enough so that a governor or two, you know, declining to certify an election won't be able to derail the process. So that means so again, we you know, it means winning by winning and winning by enough, winning by as much as possible um, down ballot and in the swing states. And rather than a message of despair, like there's so many ways they can steal this election, I'm hoping to figure out a way to talk about it that will be motivating. Uh, I think, Harvey, I, you know, I don't know if you have specific questions or anything else you want me to say. Um, well, again, I want like to do emphasize, this is not the only scenario. This is just one that I thought of. I'm not even an election expert. So, again, if I could think of it, I'm sure others can. And there's many other scenarios. We should not be complacent because just because the Electoral Reform Act, there are holes still in the Electoral College process. There are holes um, because of the governors that could align with this because of senators and members of Congress. Um, so it's not that I'm trying to put forward my scenario as the one to be fought, but just as an example of all the things that can happen. Well, uh, Kenny, that's really cogent. Your article um, at Truth Out, which we've um, uh, put it up, um, is really critical. We've got some hands, but if it's OK, I'd like to go straight to Ray McClendon. Uh, Ruth, Myla, Mike, if you'll wait, because Ray McClendon uh, is in the heart of this in um, in Georgia we also have John Brakey with us. And John, if you could be prepared to give us a brief report on Arizona, where it's probably 150 degrees, uh, we'll talk to you next. But uh, uh, Ray McClendon, who's been uh, with Citizens, uh, with um, Communities United, and has been at the heart of this uh, election protection fight, and is a real expert in all this. Ray, do you want to comment on what Kenny has said, and then uh, jump in and tell us what's happening in Georgia? That'd be great. Uh, yeah, sure. And and uh, hello, Kenny. It's always great to see you. And, and thanks for all the support that you um, provided to uh, folks like Andrea and the efforts we have here in Georgia um, throughout the, the last several years. Uh, uh, first of all, it, it, it might not necessarily be likely uh, what Kenny is saying, but it's certainly plausible. And, it's, and, and to his uh, critical point, we have to be prepared. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, to many on this call, you know, we were excited in 2020. Uh, we remember the 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 uh, background in 2020. We had come off of two resounding victories on January the 5th. That's where all our attention had been uh, to elect two senators from Georgia uh, <clears throat> on January the 5th. We were still popping the champagne and celebrating that victory, and then we woke up to January 6th uh, and, because nobody was really focused on that. We were focused on delivering those two Senate victories, which, of course, uh, led in, in no small measure to all of the success that the Biden-Harris administration had in, ter in terms of all of the historic legislation that was passed. So, so um, since that time, uh, the MAGA folks have gotten much uh, savvier in terms of how to respond. That was just a, a, a test. Now they have burrowed themselves into uh, these local election boards across the country. They have uh, uh, MAGA election deniers uh, in many of these areas, and they are prepared to block certification. Uh, someone wrote in the in the chat um, that Georgia is the poster child for the kind of thing that that Kenny's talking about, and that's uh, absolutely correct. This time around, though, <clears throat> all of us are watching these events uh, from a federal, uh, 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 national, as well as a state and local level, and we're prepared to take action in advance. I think that's the critical thing that we must know is not, not only that we need to be uh, diligent in terms of watching what they're doing, but also be, be prepared to take action. We're taking action here in Georgia. Uh, there have been, uh, there's been uh, several ethics um, uh, violation um, requests made to the, to the governor's office about the uh, MAGA members of the state election board. 
uh, and the rules that they are trying to p pass uh, at this 11th hour going into, into the um, November election. There's also been a, a lawsuit filed by the Democratic National Committee along with the State Democratic Committee and several de de uh, Democratic members of the state legislature and joined by other local election board members. Also, there are other civic engagement groups such as ours that are in this, in this battle um, writing letters to the governors uh, supporting the lawsuit. Uh, that has already been filed. So people have their, clearly have their eye on this uh, and it's bringing the kind of pressure uh, and, and shining the light on this that needs needs to happen, but it needs to continue not only in Georgia, but, also, but in all of the battleground states uh, so that they will not be able to get away with this going forward. Just this morning, we were in court here in Georgia in Clayton County, which is uh, right outside of Atlanta, uh, taking uh, now Lieutenant Governor uh, Burt Jones to task for being a fake elector in 2020. Uh, most people um, have forgotten about the fact that he would have been one of the co-conspirators uh, in, in that was um, under indictment. He would have been a co-conspirator. He was an unindicted co-conspirator in the in the uh, big Fonnie Willis case. But because Fonnie Willis had, uh, in that case, um, she had supported uh, the Democratic Party nominee for lieutenant governor, she, uh, she was forced to recuse herself. And a local uh, prosecutor was supposed to be named by the prosecuting attorney's counsel. They have sat on that case for two years and have not named a prosecuting attorney to look into the matter against Burt Jones. So we've brought lawsuit. We brought a lawsuit on that case. So, so we across the board are looking at all of these shenanigans all, and hope to hold people to account uh, to follow the rule of law across the board. And so we 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 uh, support what what um, Kenny is talking about here. We've got to be prepared for this. Uh, this is about chaos. It's it's not necessarily a, about them uh, having the law on them side on their side. It's about having the chaos on their side sufficient that a political decision can be made in, at one of these levels. Uh, by either the the Congress or the Supreme Court. And that's what we've got to fight hard against uh, beforehand and not wait until after the fact to try to join the fight. That's amazing. Incredible. And um, um, uh, I do want, I want to bring in now, thank you for that, from Georgia, Ray. I want to bring in John Brakey. Brakey is in, John is in uh, Arizona. If we're, we were to name, well, Arizona and Georgia are two of the seven key states here. Uh, John, can you give us a quick update on that? We got 70 people with you, 71. Um, if you want to give us a quick update on the struggle for a, a fair and legal election in Arizona, and then we'll go to our callers, uh, starting with Ruth Strauss, but go, uh, unless we're joined by the senator from Maryland. But go ahead, uh, John Brakey, can you tell us what's going on in Arizona? Let's see, we got you unmuted here, uh, John. I want to point out, by the way, that uh, Ray <clears throat> had a significant personal impact with with uh, Andrea Miller in Georgia in 2020, uh, as 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 John has had in Arizona. Um, uh, uh, two of the most influential people, ac actually, in having shaped uh, the current state of affairs in this country, are with us. Uh, John, did you get muted? Somehow, John, did you just John. Hear? John dropped off. Uh, I'm not sure what that was. Um, oh, okay. All right, then. And, and we're, we're clear with the center. He's not going to be on until about 6 Eastern, 3 okay. Pacific. Okay, and, so uh, and, let's, we got set. Ruth Strauss, you had your hand. Then Myla, Dr. Nancy Tatanka, Mike Hirsch. Go ahead, Ruth Strauss, please. Let's see if I can get you unmuted. My least favorite part of this job is trying to get people unmuted. Uh, there we go. Oh, John, John Brakey has come back. Um, 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 and I can't get Ruth unmuted. John, yeah, Ruth, has, unmuted? Ruth, yeah, Ruth has to unmute herself. Um, okay, she John Brakey. Away, but we do have John back. John Brakey, are you unmuted? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Can you give okay, us a yeah, I great to have uh, you with us? I well, just thank you. Uh, gave you responsibility 
for having saved the world in uh, 2020. What can you tell us about uh, the kind of fight that Ray McClendon is going on doing in Georgia? What's happening in Arizona? Well, I, uh, I, first I, I heard what uh, uh, Kenny said and, and and Ray and 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 I agree. We got a real problem, okay? And uh, but doing nothing is not a solution. So let's talk about Arizona. And let's talk about a meeting I had with I think one of the best Secretary of States in the country, Adrian Fontes, and what he's going to do. He's going to make sure that these election boards have the availability of all electronic records the digital, but they cannot screw around with the hand marked paper ballots. And he is not going to ask them to use a, you know, he's going to say, you guys can make a decision, but we got a Microsoft product that you need two records. If you get the cast vote record database and you get the ballot images, you can run 400,000 images and do that in 35 minutes. And then Pick, uh, sort them into precincts and analyze that because I don't know if I'd want to be on a board of election and be told, listen, you have no right to look at this data. You must turn around, okay, and certify, and you can't look at anything. You know, what are we trying to do? Provoke a civil war? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Hey, listen, if they think that they can take the images now and screw with them and change them. Well, ever heard of being tarred and feathered? The county has the original ballot. The county has the original image that's married to the original ballot. And there you go. Okay. And, you know, maybe if we start proving to people in this country that elections are real, maybe more people might vote. Well, let me ask you, John. Let me ask you, John, one of the concerns is Georgia is the apparatus that would uh, certify the election. And uh, Ray has expressed concern about a possible, and Ray, don't let me put words in your mouth. Um, is there anybody within the election apparatus in Georgia, in Arizona that would fight a certification of the election? So, so what you got to understand here is that, that John is doing great work uh, within the construct of the, 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 the policies and, and rules and, and procedures with an elected member of government, okay, there in Arizona. In Georgia, uh, what the legislature and the MAGA folks have shrewdly done is they have cut out the Secretary of State from the state election board. And now they have these MAGA unelected members of this board promulgating rules that will give license to local election MAGA members to go off on wild goose chases. So it's not like the the Secretary of State has set up and established uh, a process. They already have a process. It might not be as good as what John is talking about, but they have a process. And and they are the appropriate uh, party that should be reviewing whether or not there are any issues with respect to local election certification. What has been, what has happened now is that the, this unelected election board has now taken over the process of saying, hey, hey, look, hey, hey, local election board, you can now do any quote unquote reasonable inquiry to look at anything you want to look at that you might be suspicious of. In other words, a cat and a dog were walking by a drop box <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. And so we think they might have stolen some, some votes out of the, the, out of the, the drop box, or they might have been stuffing on behalf of a nursing home. And so we have the right now to go through that process and therefore slow things down because they have a legitimate, in their mind, reason to ask for a, 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 an inquiry, a reasonable, in their mind, inquiry about that drop box in a specific county. Those are the kinds of insane things that will come that will come up. And number two, what that will do is give, going back to Kenny's point, it will give the color of, of an official proceeding to potential evidence that the Trump folks will go into court with, with which, which they didn't have in 2020. 
All of that stuff was, hey, some fell off a truck or whatever, and we got him. We got an affidavit from the truck driver. Now they'll be able to get an affidavit from a legitimate local election board member saying, hey, we can't certify yet because we have, under this new rule, the right to reasonable inquiry. And therefore, we ju you just got to give us time to look into this judge, even though it specifically says that we're supposed to certify no later than, in this case, November 12th, the Monday after the after the election. So that's what we're dealing. We're not dealing with anything where it's as as straightforward as what John is dealing. Right. He's dealing with logical people. We're we're well, dealing we got with some crazies people. out here. We got Mark Fincham. We got a whole <laughs> bunch of those people. But we got a great Secretary of State, and it is different. I mean, you got a state where the of elections. Is, we got a Secretary of State, and so all these little battles will be fought in the counties. And uh, and we realize that a lot of these guys who are going to fight. Uh, when they go back to the constituent and says, "Hey, guess what? They locked us out. They we we didn't. They just wanted us to sign off. We couldn't look at anything. That is going to be a disaster." Okay. Well, the question then is, John, in Arizona and Ray in Georgia, do the um, MAGA um, infiltrators in the election apparatus have the ability to prevent certification beyond the legal limit. And that's what we, we've got to, to uh, prosecute a case on, that they don't have the authority. Our our debate here is a little bit different than John. Our yes. debate here is that the local election boards will will not be looking to confirm what is right uh, and what is correct and accurate. They will be looking to uh, fan any flame of potential um, impropriety to the point of delaying for for solely the purpose of chaos that would allow for the state legislature to step in if Trump loses uh, the election here and come up with an alternate set of electors. They thought this through. What they tried to do in 2020 illegally, they want to have the cover of legality by saying, well, the local election board, two or three local election boards can't certify at all. Therefore, the overall statewide can't be certified. Vote can't be certified. So let's just throw it over to the supermajority control, Republican controlled legislature for them to determine who the electors from Georgia are. That's the end game here in Georgia. What about What's Arizona, John? Is that, is that a scenario that could happen in, in Arizona? No. No, no, it couldn't really, uh, the way that's structured now, even though they tried in the last session, there's several people being prosecuted because they didn't certify or they claimed that they were not going to, okay? But, you know, the, the law is, is that, you know, hey, uh, you got five to seven days to certify. It's really hard to do, you know, with the old system because uh, what do you want, speed or accuracy, Okay. Uh, gee, we want to check the ballots in Maricopa. Oh, they're in 1,400 boxes. They're all in batches. Nothing is by precinct. It's a disaster. But with using off-the-shelf software like Microsoft Office, Abe, then you go ahead, uh, get the spreadsheet. You, uh, you know, go ahead and turn everything into precincts. And then you randomly pick a few. And let's say you got 1,000 people in that precinct. You don't have to check every one. Have come up with a formula, 1, 30, 60, 90, check everything on the ballot. And then when you get that done, then you go ahead and hit insert pivot table, and then you get the results. And then you match that against the originals. This is super fast stuff, you know? So, Duray, do you have uh, anything like that? Do you have anything like that in Georgia that would avoid? Again... The Secretary, well, you do. It's, it's, you have the Secretary the of State's system. office, the Secretary of State's office yeah. can do something very similar to this, but they don't control the the function that we're dealing with right now. This is an unelected board that's wow. trying to give license to these local election boards, not to deal with the 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 the, the brick and mortar issues that. That, that John is talking about, 
but anything that they might have thought they saw on driving on the way to the courthouse that now they right. can look into that can slow this down. This this is not about policy. This is not about uh, audit forensic. This is about them being able to come up with some conspiracy theory wow. and give it credence to the point that they can can have a reasonable inquiry and therefore uh, de delay certification. Amazing. I will point out I just think in that's passing. Be a lot harder than it was last time because everybody's preparing for it. Okay. The only thing that scares right. me about the preparing is that we're getting as an activist, and I've been doing this 20 years, I'm having the hardest time getting public records. They're shutting everybody off. Okay. And you know, I'm I've been there 20 years. I see the Republicans saying, hey, we gotta fight fire with fire. You're right, Ray. They're gonna pull something, okay? But I'm worried about they're going to pull something really big, like they've spent a lot of time how to get in the back door of the election system somehow because of an insider or something like that. They tell us the results are good. What do they tell us? Hey, we ran a logic and accuracy test before and after. And all that means it's working right at this moment because we know that Volkswagen built a computer that went into their diesel cars that's cost them $33 billion the time they got done with the United States because they sold 480,000 cards. And every time it went into emissions and they tested it, it cheated because it knew when to cheat. Pretty so simple. what we got here, let me just point out in passing that the, the seven uh, swing states that will decide the election, which are Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, um, Arizona, and, New Mex and uh, Nevada. Of those seven states, five have Democratic governors. Um, Georgia is, is not one of them. <laughs> Georgia and Nevada both have Republican governors. The other five states have, have Democrat governors. I don't know the, the count in uh, secretaries of state, and I don't know the count in controls of legislature. But I think you're, you're shut out in Georgia, even though the polls are now starting to show that uh, Harris may be ahead in the popular vote. You've got no traction whatsoever in the election apparatus. Is that correct? We don't have majority control in the uh, legislature or on the state election board. That's why we got to pay so much to the election board. We we believe that we can. Uh, we don't believe that Kemp, although he is supporting Trump, would necessarily undermine his own uh, voting apparatus. He did not come to Trump's defense in 2020. So we think we've got an opportunity there. But to your main point, we don't have the, the kind of, of support that they have in those other states. And also, uh, to the point I made earlier, that uh, the, the Secretary of State stood up for elections in 2020, and he was summarily cut out of the, the um, position appointed position on the state election we have 159 wow. counties in Georgia, and that's why this is such a problem, because every one of those counties has a local election board. They all have between three, five, and seven board members, and any number of those members could be MAGA election. So the, 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 the room for some kind of whack-a-mole here is extraordinary. So wow. I think you have a bigger problem than what we have in Arizona because yes. of the structure, because we got a Democratic governor. We got a secretary of state is second to none, the best in the country, uh, Fontis, and he's a real fighter. And uh, and we only got 15 counties. And uh, yeah, most of my state, it's a heavily Republican state, but our boards, uh, election groups are pretty good. But, you know, after 20 years of me suing him and beating up on him and, you know, it's interesting how much people are aware in Arizona, and uh, and we hope to spread that news across the country. You know, after I get off here, I'll put some things in the chat that people can check out. And then next week, Carl uh, uh, Harvey, I might have Ken Bennett on with us, and if we yes, get the please. time, we'll explain what we're doing. And then Ray Lutz is doing some incredible stuff. I don't know if you know or not, because he's got. Uh, the Attorney General of the United States looking at stuff pretty seriously when it comes to All images right. and making sure. Very good. So it is uh, exciting what's going to happen, but on the long run, I am very concerned about this thing getting really nasty in November. Really well, it's a guarantee. I will testify, John, that you have way more gray 
in your beard now than you did 20 years ago. And yeah. it's entirely due to you being sued uh, yeah. by whoever it was to keep you well, from getting public records. What's still going on in Santa Cruz County? It's the one up with that. And it's just incredible. Yeah, um, I got I to gotta explain citizen. everybody real yeah. quick that John John was sued by uh, uh, the, the state, by a county government merely for trying to get public records. It's mind but person personally sued, which has really you know been a mind boggling situation. Kenny Bruno, do you want to jump in before we go to question? Well, I just want to say that um, everything that you're talking about is really important, but I also want to say that one thing people might be missing is that down ballot races in blue and red states really matters. So of course the seven swing states are critical, as you said, Harvey. But so are Congress races, even in blue and red states, because without a, um, you know, a defendable House majority um, that will vote to certify a harris Walsh win, assuming they win, um, we could still be in trouble. We could still not get certification yeah. and therefore go to a contingent election. So I'm by no means saying that the seven uh, swing states aren't super critical and important, just adding that our attention also needs to still be on Congress races, congressional races in red and blue states. And don't go to sleep on Mike Johnson because he'll say he's the speaker and he'll be the speaker until noon on January 3rd. And he's a self-described constitutional nerd who will find every maneuver and machination possible that you could possibly imagine to keep himself in power. We know who he wants to be president. And, um, even though he's a constitutional nerd, somehow, miraculously, his very careful analysis always seems to align with his political preference. So don't go to sleep on the Supreme Court. Don't go to sleep on Mike Johnson. And that's why um, other races, even in red and blue states, New York, California, Texas, but they matter as well. Well, ironically, I've read an analysis that says that that says that um, uh, uh, the con the control of the House will be decided in New York and California, that there are a large number of House races that uh, are are turning point races in, in those right. and, two states. Right. And and New York had a very unfortunate uh, four-member swing red um, yes. in 2022. This time, maybe the, you know, the, the Harris-Walls coattails will, will switch it back, but we can't take that for granted. There are right. people working pretty hard in the suburbs of New York City where, um, you know, where those uh, those those seats could swing back. And that's right. Again, that's that's really important. If we I get a race in Ohio or Texas, there's right. some toss up races there. Those can be very important. Yes. And I will point out that the uh, pro-democracy forces over the last few weeks have had the incredible luxury of having Steve Bannon in jail and uh, he's about to get out. So we'll see about that as well. Okay, I'm going to go to questions now. You guys good? Ruth Strauss, Myla. Uh, Ruth Strauss first, please, and then Myla. Yeah, hi. Um, well, we've got a profusion of talent here. Uh, uh, having John reminds me of the uh, cyber ninjas who turned out to be one guy who made a $400,000 down to the money that uh, uh, Arizona was so nice to give him. And then, then it turned out he found that Biden won anyway. Um, and uh, Ray uh, is the centerpiece of, or Georgia is the centerpiece of this new um, updated film by uh, Greg Palast, Vigilantes, Inc. Everybody needs to watch that. It's hysterically funny, but also extremely alarming. And um, especially, I w it's going to be, it's showing here in Los Angeles, uh, several showings this week. However, on, I think, Friday the 13th, it will be available online, I think, at gregpalace.com for anybody to watch. And it it's an extraordinarily clever but alarming film. And for it, I'm saying this for people to tell other people who don't understand how bad things can get. That's a film that very entertainingly lays it out. And of course, Georgia is front and center in there. So I will mention, uh, Ruth, ne uh, next week, thank you for that. Next week, Greg Palast will be with us. Okay, uh, great. And we will talk in depth about that. Okay. Film. Well, one other thing. Um, last yesterday on Ralph Nader, 
there was a kid, uh, name, last name is Berlin. Um, on his uh, website is Field Team Six, like a play on words for SEAL Team Six, F I E L D Team Six. He is doing registration, uh, especially for young people, and it's uh, he's done a fantastic job. So people should visit that, and you know, if there's a way you want to help, because it is a numbers game, and if you want to help enlist, you know, more people to vote. Uh, it's, um, he, he's very well organized about it. So, um, those are two resources. Thank I will you. point out at, at six, Ruth, thank you for that. Thank you also for your research on the program at KPFK, really valuable. Um, I, I will point out that, um, Andrea Miller will soon be joining us with her great expertise on get out the vote stuff. Uh, Ray uh, McClendon's great cohort here. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Uh, we have 70 uh, people with us. Do- my, my uh, Marilyn, Marilyn I'm, I'm Marks to, is with I'm us from to, Georgia as well right now. Thank, thank you. you, Steve. I'm Marilyn I Marks. Just, Steve, I was just going to say that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so um, I, I just wanted to point out, I'm sorry, Marilyn Marks, the great election uh, protection advocate, is has just joined the call. So I'm hoping that we can hear from her next. But if if you don't mind, I'll just say a few things and then we'll bring Marilyn on. No, I want, that's okay. We'll, we'll go with Nancy, Tatanka, Mike, Lynn, and then Marilyn. Oh, okay. At any rate, go uh, I, I've got a couple of things to say, and Please, then go I, ahead. I, have, I do have a question for Ray after I've made this particular comment. Um, let's say that we manage to uh, prepare well enough and fight well enough to actually uh, get Kamala Harris and uh, and, and um, Tim Waltz elected and seated. Uh, If we don't have a majority in the Senate, if the Democrats don't control the Senate, then, and that is part of the down ballot um, calculation, then we will be in a lot of trouble because it is the Republicans who uh, manage to appoint a whole lot of right-wing judges when they have control of it. And I, I... about 30 years ago, uh, when I was just a, a hopeless C-SPAN nerd, I watched a presentation uh, on C-SPAN about the plan that the Republicans had to take over the judiciary. And they have succeeded in space, as they say. You know, they've succeeded, uh, and uh, and now they control the, uh, the Supreme Court. And there are uh, two uh, Senate races that are particularly important. One in Nebraska, we actually have an opportunity to get a, um, a an independent union organizer named Dan Osborne elected. He will caucus with the Democrats if he is elected, and that could stop the Republicans from having, from having control of the U.S. Senate. And the other is John Tester in Montana. And I think that we really need to pay attention to both of those races and make sure that both of those candidates win in order to prevent the Republicans from taking control of the Senate. Now I have my question for Ray, and it has to do with the uh, local election boards. I am wondering what the threshold is. Is it possible for one election board out of, I believe there are something like 150 something election boards in the state of Georgia. Is it possible for one election board to throw everything into chaos or what is the threat? That's my question. Thank you so much for ev- to everybody. Well, th- there is no threshold and that's what a part of the problem is that until all of the uh, 159 counties have certified, you can certify the statewide results. <clears throat> and so uh, you could have, once again, some of these smaller counties that are MAGA-controlled local election boards uh, theoretically uh, have reasonable inquiries going on for indeterminate amounts of time, regardless of what the statute says, um, mandatory certification that could then uh, allow for uh, chaos to do and throw us into um, you know that the the uh, the challenges that we've t- talked about. So so that's why the lawsuit that's going on is important, and that's why uh, having all of these civic engagement partners along with the uh, Democratic National Committee and the Democratic Party of Georgia, as well with with putting the spotlight on this, is so important as we've already. T- we must 
uh, keep this on the forefront uh, over the next uh, 60 days so that we can try to keep and be, be prepared to fight them. Any one county can uh, throw in the side of getting certified. Wow. Amazing. Thank you for that. Myla, thanks for the question. And Ray, go to Na- Nancy Naparco. Nancy? Hi, thank you. And thank you, everyone. Um, I was one of the privileged who got to see uh, Greg Palace film last night. I I strongly recommend it to everyone, um, especially uh, I want to know what Ray thinks about it when he sees it and Harvey's history um, uh, career. Uh, it gives you the the history of why there's the voter suppression. And there is nothing that I've come across that was more motivating than saying our first thing is to overwhelm um, the voting with numbers and getting everybody's vote to count. So um, I would suggest everyone's homework before the next week is that you at least go to Greg Palace and look at the um, the preview that is posted there if you can't see the film yet. But it's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, yeah, Greg's work is great. Thank you so much. And as I say, we will have Greg Palace with us ne- next week. And uh, Ray, of course, you're invited. We hope you can come back and, and be with Greg. It would really be a great thing. Tatanka, then Mike Hirsch, and then uh, um, uh, Lynn Feinerman, and then Marilyn Marks. Go ahead, Tatanka. Hi, Ray. Good to see you. Um, do you still need um, legal observers for people uh, in the state so that you can be do- documenting the shenanigans? Well, that's a g- great question. We don't necessarily need legal observers. We just we just need uh, citizen support as um, local election board, essentially local election board monitor to go along with poll monitors going into uh, the election in October uh, so that we'll know what's going on in all 150. We are uh, in the process of, of putting together teams of people training folks uh, through various coalitions that we have that can be a part of that process. And, and we're going to need some financial support uh, for that in order to uh, crisscross the state with local uh, citizens uh, that are prepared to uh, stand up for their rights in their respective counties and hold their local local election board members accountable. So that's that's a big part of what we've been doing. I, I want, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in this segment. Uh, okay. About what we'll be doing going into fall on election uh, around election time at these local. Elections. So, if Fantastic. people who are out of state like us, the best way we can help is money, not. Yeah, yeah. The best way is financial support because, uh, as we've talked about before, with relational organizing, relational organizing works best when you have uh, local trusted messengers. Do- Please catch the rest of the show at grassrootsep.org and please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Green Grassroots Election Protection Coalition. Thanks.